an excerpt from the O5 command dossier. O57, Harold Holt. Male, Australian, biologically 58 years old. Former Prime Minister of Australia. Currently contained as SCP-3477-3. Joined the O5 Council in 1967 as a ploy to gain access to SCP-006 in an attempt to achieve immortality. One of the only O5s to be directly recruited from the civil sector. Attempt was successful until the sudden appearance of several more individuals claiming to be Harold Holt, at which point he was stripped of all authority and given an SCP designation, was within containment for 46 years, until all Harold Holt staged a containment breach. Evidence suggests there may be as many as 77 different versions of Harold Holt, each with their own form of immortality. Reason for this is unknown. Possibly a quantum collision of different outcomes, a deliberate attempt at creating many versions to guarantee at least one would survive, or an example of a multiversal collapse. Item number SCP-3477 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures each instance of SCP-3477 is to be contained in a separate standard humanoid anomaly containment cell, modified appropriately for each instance located at Site-72. Instances may be informed of the existence of other instances, but are not to be allowed contact with each other. Each specific instance of SCP-3477 has specialized containment procedures relating to its specific properties. For full containment details, consult document 3477-1. Description SCP-3477 is a collection of anomalous humanoids, each claiming to be the 17th Prime Minister of Australia, Harold Holt, henceforth referred to as Zero. Zero disappeared while swimming in December 1967 and is officially presumed dead. There are currently 34 instances of SCP-3477 contained by the Foundation. While each instance of SCP-3477 displays unique anomalous properties or physically resembles Zero and are genetically identical, all individuals claimed to be zero and through varying methods have gained some form of immortality before their alleged death, which they faked in order to avoid public suspicion. No instances of SCP-3477 has been aware of existence of other SCP-3477 instances unless introduced to each other by Foundation operatives. All accounts given by SCP-3477 of their lives are identical up until the point at which they acquired their anomalous properties. All individuals professed being interested in acquiring immortality at any price before their death, and as such attempted to achieve this. At this point, the first divergence occurs. Each instance of SCP-3477 utilizes a different method of acquiring immortality. Note, SCP-3477 instances are universally successful at acquiring immortality through their chosen method. The majority of SCP-3477 instances can have their backgrounds cooperated by other individuals. Note, for example, each instance of SCP-3477 claims to have contacted individuals related to their chosen method of gaining immortality on November 20th, 1967. At their personal house, the majority of the individuals that they have claimed to met with have been found and confirmed the stories of their respective SCP-3477 instances. For example, 23 claims to have met with out of Daniel D. Medici, a Marshall Carter and Dark salesman on that day. D. Medici, when later apprehended for unrelated reasons, confirmed this. Thirteen claims have met with Brother Cassius of the Cockwood Orthodox Church on that day. Brother Cassius confirmed this story while negotiating a non-interference pact with the Foundation. 
both claim to have met with Zero at his personal residence and see no other suspicious individuals there. Despite contradicting each other on numerous instances, the stories given by each instance of SCP-3477 appear to be true and accurate. SCP-3477 instances have incredibly similar psychological profiles. During double-blind clinical analysis of SCP-3477's mental states, psychologists have reported almost no difference between individual members of SCP-3477 unrelated to their anonymous qualities. SCP-3477, however, does not represent a hive mind, as instances do not share new information between each other. Note, in a specific test, each instance of SCP-3477 was given in a short logic puzzle, with each instance being given a puzzle on a different day. Each instance solved the puzzle on the exact same period of time. It is currently unknown if Zero is a current instance of SCP-3477 contained by the Foundation. There is no way to determine if an instance of Zero, if any of SCP-3477 is generally Zero, or if there uh, is only one instance that is Zero. Addendum 3477-1 For a full list of SCP-3477 instances, see Document 3477-2. Document 3477-2 Complete list of SCP-3477 instances. Anomalous properties. Additional notes. One has been subjected to numerous biological graphs, giving it shark-like skin, the ability to breathe underwater, reduced aging, and multiple sets of teeth. One was the first instance of SCP-3477 discovered in 1970, and was initially believed to be zero. One was discovered off the shore of Victoria, Australia, where zero went missing. One claims to have been modified by the Great Barrier Reef Empire in exile, a group composed of intelligent dolphins living off the shore of Victoria. One claims to have pledged to help the Empire in exile reclaim the Great Barrier Reef in exchange for its modifications. Two is an instance of SCP-742-1 and claims to have been infected during 1967. The SCP-742-1 instance that infected died shortly after infecting 2. 2 was originally captured during an operation during 1971 to quarantine outbreak of SCP-742 in Canberra, Australia, and was noted to strongly resemble 0. It was then discovered that 1 was already in containment and the designation for SCP-3477 was expanded. Data expunged. 3 served as 057, having been recruited by the Foundation under the belief that it was Zero. When 1 was discovered, it was believed that it was merely a mimic of Zero, but as more SCP-3477 instances were contained, the 05 Council voted 12 to 1 to classify 3 as an instance. 4 has the ability to transform itself into an Australian sea lion by donning a cloak made of sea lion skin, referred to as 4-1. This cloak separates from 4 when it returns to human form. While in the form of a sea lion, it does not age. 4 was initially believed to be an unusually intelligent sea lion and was briefly contained as SCP-2967 before full knowledge of its anomalous properties was learned. 5 is an anomalous clown, formerly an employee of Herman Forrest's Circus of Disquieting. Interviews and analysis suggest that 5 was created in manner similar to SCP-3036. 5's act consists of making satirically long-winded and pompous good diatribes while periodically honking its nose. Five was found having a plenty been fired from the circus due to a lack of appeal for its acts. Six possesses 
extensive knowledge of thaumaturgy and utilizes eclectic and seemingly contradictory forms of magic to maintain its youth. Six claims it gained this knowledge by enrolling in the International Center for the Study of Unified Thermatology, where it was working as a research professor at the time of recovery. Seven is a class two reality bender and uses its anonymous abilities to ensure its longevity. Seven claims have learned how to manipulate reality by attending a free three hour self help seminar. Eight is an animated human skeleton and is genetically identical to other SCP-3477 instances. The joint of eight are held together by an unidentified black substance, which cannot be removed or broken down for testing. Eight lacks vocal cords and communicate via sign language. Eight has conveyed to researchers that it contacted a necromancer to become transformed into its current state. Nine was subject to advanced longevity treatment that, of themselves non-anomalous, were discovered via anomalous means. Nine contacted a small group of transhumanist researchers and volunteered itself for experimentation. The group allegedly self-terminate and they attempted to use the resultant treatments on themselves. It seems unclear why Nine was the only successful specimen. 10 utilizes a brilliant bronze pocket watch, referred to as 10-1, to age or de-age itself by turning the hands backwards or forwards, de-aging causing it to lose memories of the specified period of time, and jumping forwards affords it knowledge of the future. 10-1 cannot be taken from 10, and appears on its person whenever removed. 10 keeps extensive notes on both lost memories and gained foreknowledge. Notably, it has made no record of how it originally acquired 10-1. 11 appears to be biologically immortal and shows no signs of medical aging. It claims to have gained its anomalous properties through forbidden molasses-based alchemy. 11 has never learned about or interacted with William Henry Seward. 12 is a consciousness bound to a black baseball cap, referred to as 12-1. Stitched with words, live forever or die trying. Any living individual who comes in contact with 12-1 has their consciousness overridden by 12. While unworn, 12-1 is also a mimetic vector, which causes the belief that it will bestow a will in mortality. Note, this typically results in a non-anonymous desire to wear 12-1. 12-1 is resistant to physical damage, Testing has shown that 12-1 has no material embedded within it that is a genetic match for other SCP-3477 instances. 13 has had numerous mechanical augmentations, having replaced most limbs and sensory organs with clockwork replacement parts. These modifications are typical for the process of standardization in Group of Interest 004B. 13 and 14 are the only two instances of SCP-3477 to have come into contact with one another before containment by the Foundation. 13 and 14 were discovered having a religious debate with one another during the violent clash between the Cockwork Orthodox Church and the Sinew Brotherhood. Note, other members of the respective groups of interest were attempting to kill each other. 14 has numerous mutations, including replacement of the left forearm with four tentacles and relocation of the left forearm to the right arm. 14 has been implanted with an SK biotype Z. 14 is genetically human, despite obvious morphological differences and the inability of baseline humans to support such changes. 14 was a volatile in Group of Interest 0537, the Sydney Brotherhood, the most active socket group in Australia. See additional notes for 13. 15 is a head of zero, preserved in a glass jar filled with armadohyde mounted on a wooden cabinet. This cabinet has four mechanical legs, four mechanical arms, and a gramophone-style speaker affixed to it. 15 claims that its anomalous features were created by a group of anarchists operating in China, who picked up 15 in a submarine on 
December 17th, 1967. Note. 15 was discovered after investigating the claims of civilian writer Anthony Gray, who claimed that Zero had been a Chinese spy and had been picked up by a Chinese submarine rather than die. 16 is an animate statue composed primarily of dried red clay molded into approximate likeness of Zero, clothing included. 16 says that a rabbi made a golem and brought it to life using the heart of Zero. It should also be noted that 16 is an observant Jew, unlike the other instances. 17 resembles common depictions of a satyr, with ears, legs, and horns resembling those of an alpine epix. Additionally, 17 possesses minor thaumaturgical ability, allowing it to not age and create shared visual hallucinations. 17 claims to have acquired its form by taking the Kochi train to the Sealy court and challenge a bang and arrogant prince to a riddle contest. 18 is a class 4 reality bender possessing immortality, transfiguration of both itself and adjacent matter, and rudimentary control over the natural elements. 18 claims have journeyed to the top of Mount Olympus to find and consume Ambrosia. It says the Ambrosia appeared before it in a flash of white light. When it consumed the Ambrosia, it gained its enormous abilities. 19 is a non-corporeal humanoid entity physically resembling Zero. 19 was able to direct Foundation agents to grave of a corpse, referred to as 19-1, genetically identical to other SCP-3477 instances, claiming said body formerly belonged to it before its transformation. 19 claims to have determined how to transcend physical form by researching esoteric religious texts and completed the transformation after forsaking all possessions. However, the process necessary to transcend physical form required the ritualistic suicide of 19, producing 19-1. 20 is an individual by the name of Beep, born December 17th, 1967. They identify it as a reincarnation of Zero. Testing has shown it to possess all of 20's memories, and is a perfect match with other instances' psychometric profiles. 20 was discovered when it appeared on an Australian television show about individuals claiming to be reincarnations of famous individuals. Agents were sent to investigate the matter, and confirmed 20 as an instance. 21 claims to possess quantum immortality, or unfailing good luck. Despite its chronological age of 109, it suffers no ill health, and all attempts to harm it will invariably fail, typically due to a series of highly unlikely events. 21 kept a low profile for several decades, surviving by periodically winning small lotteries, However, a statistically impossible winning streak was eventually noticed, and the Foundation was brought in to investigate. 22 is an advanced stage of senescence appropriate for a 109-year-old human, but testing has shown that despite its advanced age, life functions will continue regardless of injury or deprivation. 22 claims it was able to acquire a wish from the jinn and ask for eternal life. It neglected to also request eternal youth. 23 is a humanoid animatronic resembling Zero and claims to have transferred its consciousness from its original organic body into an animatronic with the assistance of Marshall, Carter, and Dark. 23 was recovered during a raid on a Marshall, Carter, and Dark facility where it was working in order to pay off its contract. According to the terms of the contract, 23 had beep 100 more years to work with Marshall, Carter, and Doc. According to documentation recovered on site, 23 was inspired by SCP-2776. 24 has the ability to remove its tissues and organs and replace them with new ones it has acquired. All integrated components function normally and cause no deleterious immune response. 24 is currently provided with body parts from Terminator D-Class. However, 
it has been reluctant to specify where it acquired its donor part prior to coming into Foundation custody. 25 has numerous body parts removed and replaced with burial replicas, including a great lake constructed out of eucalyptus wood and here consisting of assorted grass species native to Australia. 25 is able to sustain itself upon photosynthesis. 25 had been branded with numerous glyphs of David origin. 25 claims to have discovered information on David culture and determined how to replicate the herbomancy. 26 is invulnerable to all forms of damage and does not age. 26 claims it developed these properties after being exposed to radioactive waste, had been patrolling the streets of Prespin as a nocturnal vigilante before being contained by the Foundation. 27 is a thought form or topa allegedly sustained by the thoughts of all individuals aware of the existence of Zero. Note, it is possible that individuals aware of other SCP-3477 instances also sustain 27. 27 has said that it studied at a Buddhist monastery for several years until it was eventually able to transcend the flesh and exist as pure thought. 28 has the ability to enter into periods of rapid reverse aging, restoring its youth. 28 currently has a biological age of 9, as it appears to lack precise control over this process. 29 has the ability to resurrect after suffering biological death. After dying, 29's body will begin to glow with an intense white light of indeterminate origin for a very poor amount of time depending on cause of death. After this late fate, 29 will be alive, unharmed, and biologically 59. 29 claims to have spliced its genome with biological material it will be recovered from the Holy Lands. 30 has the regenerative properties, which allow it to regenerate any body part. While 30 ages, its regenerated body parts are biologically 59. Note, the age of which... 30 claims have acquired its regenerative properties. To prevent itself from aging, 30 periodically removes body parts and regenerates them. 30 was handed over to Foundation operatives during a collaboration deal with the Global Occult Coalition, which had apprehended it as NTE-1997 Red. The GOC had refrained from terminating 30 under the belief that it was zero. 31 has the ability to siphon life force, most likely some form of e-ling vital energy from other individuals by touching them, gaining approximately one year of life for every year it takes. 31 insists it never taken more than a few years from any specific individual, unless they were already terminally ill or injured. 32's core body temperature is currently 137 Kelvin, effectively preventing biological aging. Its cells have been modified to secrete an organic chiroprotectant, allowing bodily fluids to remain liquid in a supercooled state. How it attains this low temperature is unknown. 32's temperature was initially 183 Kelvin and has been decreasing since initial containment. 32 claims that it learned how to consciously control its bodily temperature and has gradually reduced it to its current level. It has stated its ultimate goal is to reach zero Kelvin. 33 appears to be immune to entropy. As a result, it does not age, requires no air or sustenance, and excretes no waste. 33 claims have undergone an experimental surgical procedure to convert its body into a perpetual motion machine. It has been unable to provide any useful information on who performed this surgery or what it entailed. 34 is perpetually on fire. How it does not appear to be harmed by the fire. Its body has become charred and burnt after several decades of burning. 34 remains burning despite the lack of any fuel source. 34 claims that it will remain alive as long as it remains on fire and that extinguishing the fire would kill it. As such, testing involving extinguishing the fire of 34 
such as removing oxygen or submerging 34 into water, has been indefinitely postponed. Addendum 3477-2 Intake Interview The following interview has been conducted nearly identically for each instance of SCP-3477, as each responds almost identically for each question. While there are minor differences between each instance, the vast majority of each interview is the same. Each instance responds to each question with almost identical wording, with most differences being the addition of more modern colloquialisms. Begin log. Hello, please clearly state your name for the purposes of the interview. I am Hal Holt, former Australian Prime Minister. Thank you. Please describe your anomalies. Oh, hear me my immortality. Why, of course. I set myself on fire, channeling my life force into the fire. The fire is an eternal flame, and its fuel is the very essence of fire. As long as this fire burns, I will continue to live. And what drove you to seek this form of immortality? Well, I had always wanted to live forever, you see, ever since I was a child. But I knew that could never be the case. Then I get elected Prime Minister. Then your foundation, the Manor Charitable Foundation, the Global Code Coalition, the Horizon Initiative, they're all calling me, trying to get my ear. Note, as the head of state for a national government, Zero was informed of the existence and operation of the foundation during its time in office. Other groups of interest are believed to have similar disclosure policies. All of a sudden, I realized that my dreams are within reach. Could you elaborate more on your fear of death? Of course, I've been afraid of death since I was a boy, complete terror at the thought of ever not being alive, and I resolved when I was a boy that I would stop that, that I wouldn't let myself ever die. But to the normal man, that can't happen. Nobody lives forever, and there's nothing you can do to stop death. But then I found out that magic was real. I had built a life in politics, but that wasn't important anymore. Immortality was my only goal. Why do you choose setting yourself on fire? Well, I let some top men look for ways to get me immortality. They came back with a couple methods, but I chose self-immolation because I thought that was one of the safest. There will always be fire. And as long as there is fire, I will continue to burn. Do you remember what some of these methods were? No, not really. I think there were vampires, some religious cults, a few other things. And these didn't interest you? I suppose in another life, I could have gone for one, but I chose fire. You know, I was wondering when the Foundation would get a hold of me. What do you mean? Well, I didn't do the best job keeping myself secret. I got pretty careless a couple of times. Also, I've been on fire for the past 50 years. Mr. Holt, the Foundation happens to have several other individuals claiming to be held Holt in containment. Is that so? How many? You are the 34th Held Holt who we have contained. So, you don't believe I am the real Held Holt, do you? Unfortunately, we could not verify any hell hold us real. That doesn't put me in a good situation, does it? You will receive standard humanoid containment measures. Thank you for your time, Mr. Holt. You've answered all standard questions for Harold Holt's with standard answers. End log. Addendum 3477-3 Group Testing On September 8th, 2017, all 34 instances of SCP-3477 were introduced to one another in an attempt to determine the veracity of their identities. Each SCP-3477 instance was seated at a large circular table and physically isolated from other instances, allowing each instance to see all other instances without being allowed to physically come into contact with one another. Begin Log Oh, I've been told there were others, but I didn't quite believe it until now. Stranger things have happened, I suppose. Ah, we meet again. I suppose we are the only two to have met each other before. 
I suppose we all think alike, and therefore all react the same. Well, you know what they say about great mind. <laughs> I think we should introduce ourselves in numerical order. I'll begin. I, Howard Holt, had often scrapped shark parts onto me to make me age like a shark, so I could live forever. I, Howard Holt, allowed myself to become infected by a vampire, then had my biter killed, so I could live forever. I, Howard Holt, day to expunge, so I could live forever. Researchers note, all instances began by saying, I, Howard Holt, and ended with, so I could live forever. I, Howard Holt, set myself on fire, so I could live forever. Well, that was nice to meet all of you. Now I question why the Foundation would have put us together in one location. But I'm still trying to see if us interacting would prove or disprove our claims of being the true Howard Holt. In that case, let's all tell a story the real Howard Holt would know. My name is Howard Holt, and I was born in Stanmore, New South Wales on August 5th, 1908. Researchers note. All instances gave the same information in unison until describing how they became immortal. Well, I personally think that confirms they all have the same backstory. Well, I did enjoy this, gentlemen. We must get together some time again soon. And now. Addendum 3477-4 Escape Details from MTF Seda 2, Commander Achilles Rosellas, to Overseer Council, SCP-3477 Research Team, Subject, SCP-3477 Containment Breach, Date, September 10th, 2017. I've been reviewing the details of SCP-3477's recent escape. Other than cryptically saying they had to meet again sometime soon, they didn't discuss any escape attempts. And I've been reviewing the security footage and, and witness testimony from the security breach. The Howard Holtz demonstrated calculated teamwork and obviously had a shared plan. Either they were somehow able to maintain in contact with one another after the group interview, or they all managed to independently establish the exact same escape plan. Now, unlikely as it sounds, I think it may be the second. The group testing demonstrated they all clearly think exactly the same. However, I have noticed a more troubling concern. The extraordinary special containment procedures, which cover the containment procedures in front of a containment breach, for SCP-3477 have not been updated over 20 years. Since that last update, we've contained 11 more instances, each with their own unique properties. It appears that due to the cooperative nature of Hell Holt, it was deemed unlikely they would try to escape. As a result, it appears that our guard was let down somewhere along the line. This means that we now have a dozen anonymous entities on the loose that we completely lack the containment protocol for. I don't care about punishment or reprimands. My men need accurate information on how to best recontain every instance of SCP-3477 immediately before I will send them into the field to capture them. I don't care that this is giving the hell a head start. I will not endanger my men to find them. A. Rosellis, 